around the badger. Hey everyone, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is time for another champion build video. Today we will be playing as Graves in the bot lane as our ADC, because obviously that's kind of his job. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at him as a champion. We're going to talk about his runes and his masteries, his abilities, and the items that you might want to consider buying while playing as Graves. We're also going to talk a little bit of strategy you might want to consider, or just remember if you're looking to play Graves, whether you're new to him or just looking for a little refresh if you haven't played him for a while. So, the first thing we're going to do to start off this video is we're going to talk about his abilities so we know what we're talking about as the game continues. First off is his passive, which is called True Grit. What happens here is, as you standard attack, you're going to gain bonus armor and magic resist every time you use a standard attack. It does stack up to 10 times, and the bonuses are increased every 6 levels, so they'll get better and better as the game goes on. But early on, this allows you to take a little bit extra harass and kind of allows you to be a little bit of a lane bully with Graves, mostly because you have a little bit of a limited range, so you kind of have to be in people's face. Now, because of that, your passive helps you out because you're probably going to exchange some damage onto yourself. A great hook here by bonus is going to hook us up with a kill on Zillion, who, once again, another thing you need to always stress, or I should try to always stress, is try to remember to always go back with your ADC or with your support. Don't ever stand around in the lane. If we see a 2v1, they're going to take advantage of it and try to kill you. It's just you. You're probably not going to double kill the enemies. So always play safe. Go back with your ADC. That way you don't mess up, mess up with your experience sharing either. That way you stay evenly leveled. Obviously, don't go back at wrong time so you'll lose out on huge minion waves. Um, try to push a little bit first, then go back, or whenever it's you know most convenient for both of you. Um, but yeah. Go back with them, buy at the same time, get that damage spike and power spike with your items, and don't give up an, an unnecessary kill, really, so can't stress that enough. But that was the true grit. That is your passive. It allows you to just get a little bit beefier when you are standard attacking. Next is what you're going to take at level 1, which is your Q ability. It is called Buckshot. What happens here is Graves fires three bolts and a cone. They are going to be dealing physical damage and do scale from physical damage. Um, Multiple of these projectiles can hit one person, so if they are really close up to you, if it hits two of those bolts on them, it will hurt. Not for quite as much twice the damage, it does scale backwards a little bit, um, but it's going to hurt for quite a lot, and it's a good way to jump in and kind of initiate or get some decent poke off, especially if they're in your face. So um, you'll be seeing us do that th in this game. For sure, you want to max this ability out first. Here we're going to get into a little bit of a fight. Zillion comes out first and gets hooked. But I just focus Corky for a second and shoot him in the face with the, my ultimate. We're going to also then work on this Zillion. Now, unfortunately, we're going to die as we are slowed by him because he put the time thing on us. And we tried to heal to get out of range. He actually picks us both up. But, you know, whatever. Both the kills went onto me, which is more helpful <laughs> than them getting two kills onto Zillion. So that allows me to pick up a BF sword right now, which is helpful. So, um, continuing on with our abilities, though, your buckshot is what you're going to want to max out first. That is where your core in-game damage really is, at least on your abilities. At level 2, typically put a point into your E ability, which is your quick draw. Now, what happens here is Graves dashes in any direction that he wants to. And what happens is you're going to get a percentage of attack speed for the next 4 seconds. And attacking enemies with those auto attacks will lower the cooldown of your quick draw by 1 second per attack. So you will get it back a little bit more, which is why it's got a little bit longer of a cooldown. There we immediately pop the ultimate on Zillion. We're getting chased down by Corky. I'm going to flash to stay safe because I knew he was able to do that. There we dodge one of his bombs. And now what's going to happen is Thresh is going to move into this fight. Zillion, though, comes in hard, only gets one bomb on me, takes a bunch of turret aggro, and he's going to actually try to sneak up, but we have this warded, so I'm just going to buckshot him in the face and pick up the kill. So luckily we had that warded, saw it coming, wasn't going to be surprised um, by anything he was going to do. So able to pick up another kill, which will be helpful as this game progresses on. But we did take our quick draw at level 2. Then typically at level 3 we put a point back into buckshot, and then at level 4 we put a point into our W ability which is our smoke screen. Now, smoke screen, what happens here is Graze fires a smoke canister into an area. It actually does magic damage, but don't worry about building any ability power. We don't need any damage on this ability necessarily. What we're going to do, or what this does really, is any enemies inside the smoke cloud will be slowed by a percentage based off how many points you have in it, and they will have their vision reduced while they're inside that smoke cloud. Um, so kind of nice. It's like the fog of war. So it's helpful for slowing people if they're either running away or if they're chasing and they're going to have that reduced vision where they're not going to be able to see and kind of can throw them off in the middle of a fight. So you can always use that to your uh, tactical advantage. And then finally at level 6, we're going to be 
shooting people in the face. Actually, we get ganked here at the same time as we engage. Luckily, luckily we pick up a kill. When I know I'm probably going to die, just go all in for that kill. So we took out Corky in the meantime. And once again, Corky didn't get the kill. Zillion did. So um, not actually terrible. And look at that. A, a roam from the mid laner picks up a couple more kills. So things could have gone a lot worse. But... Um, at level 6, you put a point into your ultimate, which is collateral damage. Graves fires an explosive shell in a straight line. It's going to deal a lot of physical damage. It does scale from attack damage. Um, after it hits a champion or after it reaches a certain range, it's actually going to explode open into a big cone and deal damage to the enemies behind it. What you will typically want to do when you get into a fight as Graves is you're going to want to start off, let's say this is like a medium-sized team fight, typically, in a perfect world, not all the time, you're going to start off with your buckshot and then you're going to use your collateral damage right away. Now, sometimes you can hold on to collateral damage and pick up kills as people are dispersing. But if you use both of those right away, you're going to do a couple things. A, it's going to do a lot of damage to everybody who's stacked up. That way, they're not already separating. That way, you get the most damage potential out of your ultimate and out of your buckshot. Another thing that's going to be incredibly helpful, too, when you do both of those right away is you're going to maybe probably make them reconsider fighting you, which means you can probably chase them down if you're all together and, and chain your CC up. Or you can then, you know, use your uh, use your smoke screen afterwards and slow them to continue chasing them in the fight. But you're going to do a lot of upfront damage, and if they do stick around, chances are you're just going to be ahead in that fight. So that is one thing you can do with that combination is use it right away because that is your main damage. And if you don't have anybody able to peel for you, and you will be fairly close up in the action because your attack range is considerably shorter than other champions like Varus or Caitlyn, you're going to be up in their, I mean, you're going to be up in their face. So if you get that damage off, you know, it's actually probably going to scare them a tiny bit and you'll be ahead in the damage count, which is where you want to be when you then continue to duel the person that'll be probably the closest to you, whether that's a tank or whoever it might be, a, a bruiser from top lane or a jungler, you're going to be able to take them out because they will have taken a lot of damage. So that's why you want to use those abilities, um, and it's pretty helpful. You can then use your quick draw then after you use those two abilities to either close up a little bit more distance if they are dispersing and running a little bit. That way you move up and you're able to chase a lot easier and you get that attack speed to then continue bursting them down. Or you can use it to get away if they're coming in hard. Here we're going to actually pick up an assist. We're actually going to have a horrible fail flash in a second, which really is unfortunate. Um, but then we just slide to the wall anyway, so yeah, here goes a fail flash. Whatever. But a bigger fail is going to happen in one second anyways, because as we can see, Zillion right now ults himself, so I stopped shooting him. But for some reason, our jungler moves in and decides to kill him to reset him to then get him all of his life back. So we don't get that kill because our jungler was stupid who then immediately said in chat that he didn't do it, which obviously he did. So if you're that kid watching, you did it. How dare you? But obviously worse things could have happened, but um, don't attack Zillion when his ult's on something. Just let that person run around acting like they're going to die, and then when it ends off of him, because it's only on for like three or four seconds, just shoot him one more time and kill him. Just, just do it that way. So much easier. So much easier. Because that revive, especially when he builds um, AP, the revive health that that character gets is even higher. So typically, late game, they can almost come back with full health, which is like fighting them again, and you really don't want to do that. So that is just something that happened. Just my little thing. Oh, actually, there's a random ulti to pick up a kill on Zillion from distance. I actually got him with the splash shot part of the ultimate. Um, if you catch people out like that, too, or squishy targets, you're going to do a lot of damage with that ultimate, I believe... Right now we're level 12, so right now that actually does, I think, 350 base damage plus 1.5 attack damage. Um, so what, we got like probably like 260 attack damage right now? So it does like a total of like six or 600 damage to him at least? So pretty good amount. So don't be afraid to shoot people in the face with your ultimate. Now let's talk about the build a little bit as this game's gone on. We have actually our first, what you'd call three and a half-ish items. What we did early on is, while laning, we wanted to pick up that Vampiric Scepter for some of that sustain. If we could afford the BF Sword as our first buyback, that's what we wanted to do there. If you get that early advantage with all of that gold and you can get that damage with the BF Sword, you are going to be in a commanding position as Graves to really deal a lot of damage. We're getting a lot of assists this game, I've realized. There's a lot I didn't slow down, but long section, long game. It's going to happen. So you're going to be really ahead in these fights when you are, you know, I don't want to say bursting people down, but you will be bursting them down really hard, actually, when you are using that buckshot. It also scales quite well, too. It scales from 0 0.8 
attack damage. Multiple bolts can hit people, and its base damage at level 5, which you'll have at level 9, is 200 damage. So you're going to be hitting people quite hard. It'll be the equivalent of about 4, 5, 6 standard attacks at that point in the game. Um, but yeah. Died a couple times, getting a little bit caught out. Oh, Trendomir's also slightly huge on the enemy team right now. Um, just because. It's Trendomir. It's going to happen. Undying Rage. But we bought the BF Sword, and we put that into our Bloodthirster as our first main item. And we're going to start stacking that, obviously, when we get all those minion kills. So it has increased damage for all of our abilities and our standard attacks. Then we obviously picked up our boots because attack speed boots are the way to go. You want those for that attack speed. And then I think I got a zeal because I do like the zeal. It's pretty nice for the crit, the attack speed, and more movement speed. Pretty helpful. And then we go for the last whisper, which is going to help us burn straight through people when we are dealing all of that damage. So that's what we did. And then we finally did finish off the zeal into the phantom dancer which is very helpful actually on grades for a couple reasons over static ship. One, it will actually give us a little bit more attack speed, um, although we can still get attack speed with our quick draw. But what it's going to do is it's going to give us that 50 attack speed, 30 crit chance, and then it's going to give us 5% movement speed. Um, the other thing we really like about Phantom Dancer over Static Shiv is its unique passive where your champion ignores unit collision. And as somebody who has to be up a little bit closer to deal that damage because our attack range is just a bit shorter, you really do want to be able to ignore that unit collision because you don't want to get stuck in a bad spot and that gets you killed. Like if, if that's the difference between you getting killed and getting out or getting a kill, like just that little bit being in like a pack of minions in the middle of a fight, you don't want it to kill you. There Yasuo comes up, but little does he know, I can burst him down incredibly fast. There was another kill if you want to slow it down. I guess that's cool. We also killed Corky too. Apparently I missed a million kills editing this, but um, yeah, you will burst people down fast as you saw. I mean, this is fast forwarded, but you saw they disappeared in about two hits. You will crush people. So that is what we're trying to do. Crush the people with the graves um we got about a dozen kills already so whatever um next though what we're doing with the build is we picked up another bf sword and you probably know where this is going because there's not too many items you would build with bf sword we're actually going to be building towards the infinity edge which will actually really increase our damage quite a lot there's another one of those incredibly quick burst down times onto zillion um i did take a handful of damage but I was able to murder through him quick too. We're actually just gonna sacrifice ourselves here for the inhibitor. There's actually been a lot of miscommunication on our team, um, but you, you know, sloppy solo queue games are gonna do that. Um, but yeah, that infinity edge will give us just that next power spike that we want in the build. So let's go ahead and talk about our runes and masteries now. First off, let's hit up those runes. Now, what you want to do with these, it's a little bit different than some other uh, of your ADCs. What I like to do is for our marks, we go with attack damage. For our glyphs, we go with the armor. We do want those. You could do health if you really wanted to, but I like the armor. Um, what we do then with our glyphs is I actually do flat MR. There we got Zillion to use the alt immediately on himself. We'll talk about this quick. Zillion uses his alt on him. It makes him rather worthless, to be honest. We're actually, unfortunately, going to die. We actually take some kind of lantern that I didn't even see and actually slide in the direction I didn't want to go. That's okay. We'll pick up some assists. But uh, if Zillion burns his all on himself, that's completely not helpful for him and his team. He really shouldn't be using it on himself. He's not. His job is to use it on somebody important. He's not that important. So um, if you get him to burn his all on him, that's actually a decent trade. So... Um, we did that immediately there. But back to those runes, we did the magic resist glyphs, and then as for our quintessences, we take attack damage, not lifesteal, because typically we'll be getting the vamp scepter very soon, um, and that extra attack damage early is going to allow you to trade a lot more successfully in lane, um, surprisingly. So that is what we do with our runes. And then as for those masteries, pretty standard stuff, 2190, 21 that offense, pick up everything that's going to help with your attack damage. And then a little bit in that defense to help you out there. Here we are going to get chased by the ghosting Trindomir. But luckily, the communication with Thrust gets us a lantern. And will then kind of bait this out a little bit. He's going to keep coming for me. I use the ult. I use the buckshot. Try to get the damage onto him. He is going to undying rage. And then Zillion actually is going to ult him. This is that crazy combination you could tell they were trying to work out. But uh, we baited it out. And we're still, you know, we're keeping our distance. I don't want to go stand on top of his face. Uh, I'm not able to pick up the kill, but that's okay. 
It's okay. We stayed alive. Luckily, good communication with our uh, our support. Pick the lantern up and continue on. But it's fine. We got plenty of damage. We can use the rest of it here. So we're gonna just go ahead and quick draw in or uh, buckshot after we do our uh, slidey in. Pick up the kill on to Zach. Yeah, I mean Yasuo. Yeah, there it is on Zach. And then here we're gonna slide again, buckshot into his face again. So the triple kill comes in, and we'll be able to round the game out because you have a lot of damage late game with this. As you can see with the build, we decided to start building a little magic resist because we were taking mostly magic damage from most of our team actually, which is hilarious. But we're actually building into the Guardian Angel, which is actually a great item on Graves. Um, as much as you don't usually get GAs quite as often on all your ADCs, it's great for him because he can come back up and burst again with his uh, Q, he can also dash away. So here we're going to speed up our attack damage while hitting these towers so we can try to end the game a little bit quicker. But that's going to be a build for Graves. If you have any questions, put them down below. Everything you need to know about Graves' build is in the description as always. And I will just see all of you guys in the next build video. And we're going to catch out their ADC for a split second. She's going to jump into Valor, and then we're going to turn focus immediately, which causes her to come back in. We'll focus her back, but she's going to get back out of range, so we'll turn around and focus Braum. We decided to pick, you know, the closest target. We want to get rid of the ADC, but if she's out of range, we've got to switch to the other one. We'll be able to pick up actually both of these kills here. I'm going to flash forward and throw one more spear because it should be able to kill her, and that will help us pick up the double kill.